Well, good morning. Well, we're in that season now. We're in that, that season between the meal and the manger, right? Between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And uh, this is that, that, that season where, where it's kind of focused on, on a few things. It's focused on uh, shopping. It's focused on, on, on cleaning. And, and then we focus on, on waiting. And uh, like we referred to uh, during announcements, this is the first Sunday of Advent. And, um, and we want to talk about that some today and what does that mean for us. So let's start in prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, we um, wait anxiously uh, for the arrival of Jesus. And I pray that this morning as we uh, consider that and contemplate that, that, that we don't wait, that uh, we open the doors for him this morning. Allow him into our hearts. And Lord, as I often pray, I pray again today that uh, where my words may not be clear, where I may stumble, Lord, that, that you would bring clarity and that you would touch the, the hearts of those uh, hearing the message today with your words. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, uh, we're having technical difficulties this morning. Um, our, our projector went out this morning, and so I have about a two and a half minute video here. And so if we'll just sit in silence for two and a half minutes okay. and stare up here. Uh, but the video basically is talking about Advent and saying how Advent is a season of, of waiting. And uh, we, again, it begins four, four Sundays out before Christmas. And uh, it begins this time where we wait upon the arrival of Christmas. It's really a, a defined by this whole period of, of waiting. And, and again, it's four weeks. We, we call Advent four weeks of waiting. And, and we think that's kind of a long time sometimes, especially little kids. They think it's a long time. But, you know, we go all the way back uh, to, to Abraham and, and to the, the, the founding father of, of our faith. And, the, and we look at when, when God talked to Abraham and he said, uh, I'm going to bless the world through you. And he's giving the, the prophetic vision, the prophetic idea of Jesus. And, and so he tells Abraham this, and we have to wait four weeks. Abraham had to wait 2,000 years before Jesus came on the scene. And so our four weeks seems pretty uh, uh, minimal, uh, to say the least. Now, I want to assume, and maybe this is a wrong assumption, maybe I should start with how many of you have heard of Advent before? Okay, good, most of you. Now, what, it, what is Advent, what, what does that mean? Any ideas? Because in the context that we're talking about this morning, we'll say, well, it's four weeks, you've already said. But that's not what the word Advent means. What does the word Advent mean? Deliverance? Coming. coming. coming yes. Coming. That's what it means. Coming. The Advent. It's the coming. And, and it's uh, uh, literally the definition is the arrival of a notable person, a thing, or event. And when you look at it and, and use it in a sentence in other contexts, it, it's like, oh yeah, well that makes sense. You know, you talk about the advent of television. Or, or the advent uh, of, of the internet. It's, it's the coming, the beginning, the arrival of these things. And so when we talk about this season of Advent, we're talking about the season where we wait, our focus upon the coming or the arrival. It comes from the Latin word Adventus, which means literally coming. And so when we talk about the Advent season, we're not talking about a notable uh, thing or event or an internet or the we're not waiting for the coming of, of presents or waiting for Santa Claus, but we're waiting for the coming of our God. Uh, the coming of, of Jesus Christ. So this is the first of four Sundays of Advent where we focus on waiting. I 
hate waiting. Waiting is, is, is horrible. And you know, as adults, we like to look at little kids during this season and laugh at them because, oh, the kids are so impatient and they're waiting for Christmas morning. We look at, look at the little kids and, and we talk about how they have to wait. But I think as adults, we do ten times more waiting than kids do during this season. I mean, certainly we're waiting on Christmas, right? And then you have to wait in traffic. A lot of traffic. And then you have to wait in every conceivable line that there is. You've got to wait in lines at the gas pumps. You gotta wait in lines at the grocery store. You gotta wait in lines at the toy store. You gotta wait in lines at the clothing store, at the sporting goods store. You gotta wait in lines at the restaurant. You even gotta wait in lines in the drive-thru. It's like drive and wait instead of drive through. It's, it's waiting and waiting and waiting. And so we're in this season where we wait and wait and wait. And then some of us say, well, I'm gonna avoid the lines and I'm gonna order all my Christmas stuff online. And then you wait for it to come. So, waiting is horrible. And, and Scripture talks about, it has a passage that says, Therefore, be patient, brethren. Be patient until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and the late rains. You, too, be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. In the Bible, the word for advent or coming is parousia. And it's used two times in this passage. It says, therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. And then at the end of the verse it says, uh, you too be patient, strengthening your hearts, for the coming, or the perusia, or the advent of the Lord is near. And this ties several ideas with the coming of our Lord that we should keep in mind. Number one, we should be patient. We should practice patience while we're waiting for the Lord to come. We should uh, exercise that. We should be patient. It also says uh, that, you know, being patient, one of the things that's necessary for that is you got to wait. You got to wait. So wait upon the coming of the Lord. And it also says that what we're waiting on is very precious. It says like the farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil. Uh, we're waiting for something that is very precious. And so our wait is entirely worth it. And in the meantime, while we're waiting and we're practicing patience for something that is precious that is coming, it says, strengthen your hearts. Strengthen your hearts. I didn't do any uh, Black Friday shopping this year. Anybody do Black Friday shopping this year? Got a few? That's less than last year. A lot less than last year. But it's interesting because I did look through the ads. And, or else you're all not being honest. I don't know what it is. But uh, I did look through the ads, though. And one of the interesting things that I noticed, and I don't know if I noticed it. You know how when you buy a red car, you notice every other car on the street is red? I don't know if it's because I'm, I've got furniture on the mind. But as I'm looking through the ads, I just noticed a whole lot of lazy boys that were in the Black Friday ads. And, and this is one of those things that when we talk about waiting, we kind of picture this idea of a lazy boy. Uh, we, you ever have somebody tell you, you know, hey, it's going to be a few minutes. Uh, I need to have you to wait. And so, what do people always say in conjunction with wait? They always say, make yourself comfortable. Right? It might be a few minutes, you need to wait. Make yourself comfortable. Make, make yourself at home. And so, in other words, what they're telling you is, hey, Sit down in a lazy boy and just veg while you wait. Don't, don't worry about doing anything. Just, just have a seat. Just, just kind of space out and veg. And this idea of waiting is, is so contrary to what Scripture calls us to. So contrary to what Scripture uh, talks about when it's talking about waiting and talking about patience. You know what a tort is? In the legal terms, not bakery terms. In, in legal terms, a tort is a wrong done to someone else. The, the, resort, the result of, of a tort is torture. Right? 
if you have the result of, of legislating, you have legislature. Right? You have uh, the result of, of someone who is seizing is a seizure. The result of, of literacy is literature. The result of advent, adventure. Advent, this idea of, of the coming of God, it was this waiting, is not an idea of sitting back and relax and make yourself comfortable and do nothing. It's an invitation into an adventure. It's an invitation and understanding that, that Christ is coming. It's not a sentence to a lazy boy. So don't, don't just sit still and wait. And don't just twiddle your thumbs and, 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 and bide your time. Use this time to engage. Use, use this time to interact. And, and make an impact. And, and prepare to, to have an adventure. We talk about waiting in, in Isaiah uh, chapter 40 verse 31. Who, who knows that verse off the top of your head? I know. Who knows that? Yes. He who waits upon the Lord will gain strength. He will mount up with wings like an eagle. He will run and not get tired. He will walk and not become weary. And that's from someone who waits upon the Lord. There's strength involved in that. There's adventure involved in that. There are wings of an eagle involved in waiting upon the Lord. As you wait, you have the strength. And you have, have the wings when, you, when you're waiting for the purpose of, of the coming of Christ. Here's the thing that, we, you know, we're we talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. We're talking about, and I, I so oftentimes... Um, Oh, this is one of those mornings where words are not going to be able to express. I'm not going to be able to hit the nail on the head. We're talking about, we live in a world that is broken. And we need to understand the entire ramifications of living in a world that's broken. Try to make a decision when you and everything around you is broken. Try to, to make a perfect life when you and everything around you is broken. And, it, and it's going to be broken. And the only thing that, that writes that is the coming, the advent, the arrival of Jesus Christ. And, it, and if we can't uh, uh, look to that and understand that he has already now given us a, a taste of that, experience that now, take that, that the coming of Christ that, and make that an adventure as we wait incorporate that into our lives and say, I, I'm going to use that, that saving grace of Jesus Christ now as I wait for him and I'm going to have it infuse my life. We're, we're in a waiting season. We're in the Christmas season. And whether we want to argue about whether Christmas is Christian or not or secular, you're going to wait this next four weeks. You're going to wait in lines. You're going to wait. And, and you can use that time. And I often do. I'm horrible at this. Because I'll stand in a line. I mean, you can be surrounded by 20 people and not say a word. And you're just standing there lethargically. Like, you know, you're all... It's so awkward. How, how often do you... You get in an elevator with 15 other people. And you don't say a word to them. That is so strange, isn't it? You, you, can, you can go about life like that. Or you can say, wait a minute. I'm waiting. I'm waiting between floor 2 and floor 7. And, and I can do something with this moment. I can talk to somebody. It's so funny. You know how sometimes you go home and you go, Oh, I met the nicest person on the elevator. Really, what they do? They said, Hi. <laughs> really? That was really, that's what's really nice. Somebody just talks to you. I have a friend I was standing with at McDonald's and we were sitting and we were chit-chatting standing in the line at McDonald's and he's paying attention. I wasn't. And he notices that the family in front of him have little kids and they've ordered their meal and it comes time to pay for their meal 
And he could see that the husband and wife are like, oh, we don't have enough money. And before I knew what was going on, I had no clue. He steps up and he's paying for their meal. I'm like, what, what, what just happened? Because he was paying attention. I know a young man this past week who got rear-ended in his car. He was driving and, and another car <coughs> slams into him, rear-ends him. His response to that was to get out and ask the woman who hit him if he could pray for her. Seeking those moments. Seeking the opportunities to say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have an adventure. I'm going to step out of the norm, step out of the expected. I'm going to, to live a life that says, Jesus Christ is coming. Be patient. Wait. Strengthen while you wait. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil. We wait for the precious Son of God. And our lives should reflect that coming, that advent of God. He's coming from, from far away to near. And this is what we celebrate. The coming of God from a place that is far away to somewhere very close and near to us. So we need to use this as an opportunity to lay hold of every moment, to, to, to seize every opportunity, to take life and squeeze it for all that it's worth. And recognize that as we walk through this season, this Advent season, um, and we're so focused on material things, which I'm, I'm not bashing the material things, but understand that adventure does not come from material things. Adventure comes when when human beings and moments collide. That's where adventure is. That's where Christ is. Human beings and moments collide. And I want to make one more final note before we, as we close out here because Advent is, is not about Christmas. Not really. Because this word Advent in Scripture, parousia, that we said, we talked about, it's used 17 times of Jesus. 17 times it talks about the Advent of Jesus, the coming of Jesus, the parousia of Jesus. 17 times. And every time it's talking about His second coming. Not His birth. His second coming. When we read that verse, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and the late rains. You too be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. That's James, the half-brother of Jesus, speaking in the New Testament. James chapter 5. He's talking about the second coming of Jesus. When Jesus comes again, he's coming not in a manger, but he's coming on clouds. He's coming not in the middle of the night and quiet, but he's coming with trumpets blaring and archangels. And, and if you're sitting here today, and, and you're not real sure about this Jesus, but you say, okay, uh, he, he existed Maybe that's all you are. Maybe that's as far as you've gotten. He existed. I want to tell you that all the prophecy that talked about Jesus coming the first time is completely overshadowed by the prophecy of Jesus coming the second time. It is a far more certain thing that he will come again than that he did the first time. And we know that he came the first time. What I'm saying is that as we wait in this adventure, don't think that this is a four-week period. Don't think that, whoa, whew, Christmas is over, I'm done with that. Because we're not waiting for Christmas morning. We're waiting for the return of Christ. We're waiting for the advent, the coming, the parousia of Jesus Christ to come back and to take this world and, and to return it to its original glory from the Garden of Eden. All the brokenness that we deal with every day to get rid of it. To set up a kingdom where there are no more tears. There, there, there's no more pain. 
And he tells us, as Christians, as members of the body of Christ, as people who put their faith in Jesus Christ, he says, you know what, you can start that kingdom today. You can start that kingdom and taking hold of every moment and living life as an adventure, a result of the advent of the coming of Jesus Christ. We sing at Christmas time, we've taken his, his two arrivals and we've meshed them into one oftentimes and, and we often forget that the things that we endure now, if we will endure them patiently, and I know that we endure, we endure. But if we endure them patiently and strengthen along the way with the with a precious idea that the, the precious Jesus is coming back. But, but we forget about that sometimes. We sing at Christmas time, joy to the world. Right? You're all familiar with, with the Christmas carol, joy to the world. It's not a Christmas carol. It has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus. If you listen to those words, joy to the world, it has everything to do with him coming back the second time. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Listen to the words. It's about when he comes back again. So in 27 days when Christmas is over, that's all it is. I think it's 26, 27 days now. Don't forget that we're still waiting. We're still in this period. We're still strengthening. We're still seeking adventure in His name. We're still seeking moments where we can take human beings and moments and have them collide to the glory of Christ. Until his second coming. Until his advent. So, I challenge you today to let the adventure begin. Let's pray. Our dear Father, we... We step into this season and, and, and it's uh, such a beautiful time of year, Lord. Lord, we can grasp this time of year and, and we can uh, just relish it in, in your name. But it also has many pitfalls and traps that has a tendency to sometimes lure us away. So I pray that we strengthen our hearts during this period. That, that as we look forward to these this, this day in, in four weeks where we celebrate the fact that you come near, that we don't lose sight of the fact that you're coming back. And what a glorious day, Lord, that will be. And I pray that the life that we look forward to, that we can now begin to take a grasp of and live now. Share with people now. There are many in the world who who don't have the strength, the knowledge, the understanding that they need you now. Help us be an agent. We thank you and pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.